isn't awesome? And so it's not an accident. This just dropped in my heart that we're celebrating 4th of July freedom. Independence. Independence, but not in this secular, worldly way. It's freedom to be who God created us to be. That uh, women are a very important part of the expression of Christ. And so uh, it's a wonderful thing, and we stand humbly in that role, and, uh, but it's fun. It's fun to be free. Yeah, it it's, it's fun to be free that I actually can be who I've been created to be. So let me tell you, and that's a handful. <laughs> sure is, sister. <laughs> wow. Praise God. All right, so I'm going to continue on, thank you, uh, with my expository teaching on James, the book of James, and won't share anything as far as the history of James and who he is historically except to say he was a tiger, and he was absolutely one of the bravest apostles around. I want to be like James, courageous and valiant Even in his dying breath, even as they stoned him, he was declaring the works of God and the greatness of God. And thereby, when you hear the history of who he is, it really helps you understand the book of James. Very direct. And and he is not not patty-caking flesh. We can't rip out the book of James because it may curdle us a little bit or curl our hair a little bit, we need to embrace the whole gospel. Amen? Amen. So the only thing I'm going to talk about, we're only on verse 9. Can you believe that? But the one thing I want to remind everyone is, uh, you know, we're talking about trials and tribulations, as Crystal was talking about. He says, rejoice, right? And then I love it because if any of you lacks wisdom, you're to ask of God and he will give it to you liberally. And that is in connection with when a trial hits you, you go to the father immediately asking him for wisdom about the situation. Don't come up with your own idea of what it is. Don't go into your boohoo place, which we all tend to do, but go to God immediately and say, Okay, God, what is the wisdom in this situation? And you will get wisdom liberally. You will get understanding. He will give it to you if you go to him first, okay? All right, so we're going to go to verse 9 now. Let the brother in humble circumstances glory in his elevation. Now, this is out of the Amplified. As a Christian called to the true riches and to be an heir of God. And the rich person ought to glory in being humbled by being shown his human frailty. Because like the flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun comes up with a scorching heat and parches the grass. Its flower falls off and its beauty fades away. Even so will the rich man wither and die in the midst of his pursuits. Uh, pursuits of money, drivenness. See, money is not the problem. Money is a blessing of God. Money is how the body of Christ operates right now, right? We, God brings in money, and then we can further his covenant. God's given us the wisdom and ability to attain wealth to establish what? Our big mansion? No, to establish his covenant on the earth. So it's the love of money that's the problem. Money is not the problem. The love of it is. So if your pursuit is about money and status and riches, that's sin. All right? If it's to, and there are some big dreams in here. We've heard some of the dreams in this place. And all we hear attached to the dreams is where the money's going, where the money's going. And let me tell you, the cameras in heaven have taken the pictures and recorded that, and that's where the money's going to go. Amen? To the kingdom of God. So we don't want to be driven. If you're driven by anything, driven by money, driven by success, driven by ministry, then that's flesh. 
but being led by the Spirit of God. Those that are led by the Spirit are what? The sons of God. We want to be led by the Spirit. Our focus and, and source must at all times be in God. Being in ministry, it has to be. We were prepared when we had our own business. What God was preparing us. He's preparing all of us in different stages in our life for our destiny and for what our next season is. God prepared us having our own business. We've worked for corporations. We've worked for companies. And then we've had our own businesses. And that taught us about faith for our finances. Trusting God for our finances. I mean trusting God. Trusting God in our finances. We learned to trust God. And it prepared us for this season where we have to trust God. And, and we can trust God. And, and David especially, he has a reckless faith. I mean, he, he just, nothing really bothers him. Absolutely. He just knows. doesn't matter what anybody said. It doesn't matter uh, what bank accounts say or anything. He goes, ah, God will provide. God's got this. He's got this. Oh, God will heal it. Not a problem. He's the healer. I tell you, that's a wonderful anchor to have, isn't it? To have that. So if our trust is in our accomplishments or our achievements, if they're in talents and gifts and intelligence, money, education, on and on, you're in trouble. It has to be trusting. Even you could be the most amazing uh, teacher there ever was. But if your source is your teaching gift, if that's what you're depending on, then you're not in humility. It's about him igniting that teaching gift and anointing it. Amen? All right. Blessed, verse 12. Blessed, happy, to, and to be envied is the man who is patient under trials and stands up under temptation. For when he has stood the test and has been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life, which God has promised to those, to him who believes. Now, We've talked about this almost to nauseam, but I'm going to repeat it again. When we are in a trial or when we are facing circumstances that seem insurmountable, it's in that trial there is a treasure that you are going to gain that you can't gain any other way. There is a treasure that hope of glory, that weight of glory that's in the unseen realm. The seen realm is a trial. There it is. It's blasting in your face and the voices are loud and the enemy's saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. And the Bible says, do not look at those things that are seen for they are subject to change. They're temporal, temporary. But keep your eyes and focus on the unseen realm because they are eternal. So in that trial, Here's where we need that shift of thinking. We take our thought and go like this. Whoa, a trial. Woo, a trial. There is a treasure in this trial. I'm pressing through to the treasure. I see that spirit of fear as a camouflage That's covering the treasure box. It's a spirit of fear saying, don't come, don't come, don't come. I go, oh, here I come, baby. You better watch out because I'm going to rip your mouth off because I am going to receive that eternal weight of glory. It's a treasure. So the trials, this is according to the word of God. It's a crown, a victor's crown of glory. Amen? It is a crown. And what did we do when we see Jesus? It says we cast our crowns, right? Casting our crowns. Wow. How many crowns are we going to have that we get to cast? Oh, here's another one. Here's another. Oh, I didn't know I got that one. Did I really do that? Whoa, here's another one. And I love what Lance Wall now, he does this. I love this. I've never heard this before. So he talks about, you know, you go up this mountain. And then boom. And then you go up this mountain. Boom. This mountain. Boom, boom, boom. But see, these boom, 
are the eternal weight of glory, the treasures, those valley. They're the eternal. That's where you're getting all the goodies. You're digging deep, you're digging deep. And then you draw a circle, a half circle underneath it. What does it become? A crown. Isn't that cool? It is a crown. Hallelujah. We are constantly, constantly sowing into our future. Everything we do, financially, sowing into our future. David was, I tell you, he was one that, and we both, we've tithed from the time we got married. And I tithed even before, and you did too, before we got married. Every, I can't think of a time, even when we went through our loveliness, we had bags. Now, you're going to think I'm exaggerating. Trash bags. Uh, trash bags, not bags, trash bags of unpaid bills. Unpaid bills when he had his business. God was getting our attention. He got it, but I'll tell you what. And unpaid, for, you know the story. You, you all heard how God delivered us and all of this, but unpaid bills, but we never missed a tithe, ever, ever. And God forgave Every, we had $400,000. I'm talking. We were going to lose everything. $400,000 in a house. Da, 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 da. And we thought, oh my gosh. And God, he literally, and I believe it was in a, a, in a uh, uh, Shema. Uh, what is it? Shema? Shema. Shema. Shmita. We were getting there. We got Shram, 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 Shmita. It was in a Shmita year. I, we didn't know what Shemitah from Shlita. We didn't know any of that stuff when this time. All we knew, we were in trouble. And we had $400,000 that we owed investors, banks, realtors, landowners. So we got out of the one, the house sold, but we're going, oh. He didn't. I did. Oh. He was going, oh. And I was going, oh. But... That's how we have each other. But what God did, every penny they didn't even know each other was forgiven. All at the same time. Within two weeks, we forgive you. It's forgiven. It's wiped out. Ba, 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 ba. And we know why that happened. It wasn't because we were, you know, all this great and had all this faith all the time and all this stuff. We were obedient even in the lean times when it made no logical sense. Every contractor got paid. We did not go bankrupt. He refused to go bankrupt because he said, our contractors need to be paid and will be paid. They were paid. God honors obedience. God honors. When you sow, as you serve in the body, you are sowing into your ministry. As you sow in things that you do, and you go, why am I doing it? You are sowing. First of all, you're worshiping God in it, but you're sowing into your future. You're sowing in every area of your life. Whoa, it's glory. It's glorious. Let no one say when he is tempted, verse 13, I'm tempted from God. For God is incapable of being tempted by what is evil, and he himself tempts no one. But every person is tempted when he is drawn away, enticed, and baited by his own desires, which are lusts and passions. That's temptation, right? Then the evil desire, when it has conceived, okay, conception, that means when it's implanted. In the Greek, it says, taken custody takes you into custody. When sin, when the enemy comes and takes you into custody, he enslaves you. Okay, that's what this temptation, when it is conceived, he snatches you. When that happens, it gives birth, right? You're carrying something, and then all of a sudden, this something grows and gets bigger, and it gives birth to what? Sin. And sin, when it's fully matured, brings forth death. So do not say, well, God, this is all your fault. Or, you know, the devil made me do it. No, you made you do it. 
You made you, you cho chose to agree with the enemy, with his big fat lying mouth. We agree with lies. That's, that, that's how much power the enemy does not have. He can't make you do it. He's just there enticing you to believe his lies, to get you in fear, to agree and shake hands with fear. Okay? And David preached on fear not because fear is the basis for all our slip-ups. Fear. Call it what it is. Fear starts to grab you. You can feel it right here. Go, God, give me wisdom. Where's this coming from? I know it's not from you. Show me what's going on. What's the treasure? What's the wisdom in this? This is for your daily walk. This is how we need to eat the word every day. We eat the word. This is an eating the word demonstration on what you should do at home. How you eat the word. You look at the word. You meditate on the word. Ask for wisdom about the word. Amen? All right. So it brings forth death. Sin does. Death to what? This is a little quiz. Death to what? To life. Death to life. Death to what kind of life? Spiritual life? Abund Who said abundant life? Very good. The word is the bread of life. Good, sister. What else? Death to what? Death to what? To the Lord? You're, you've stepped away. To your relationship. That's, he's after that. The enemy hates our relationship. Freedom. Death to freedom. That's exactly right. Because, see, we need spiritual boundaries. Freedom really is, it's birthed out of spiritual boundaries. You go, that sounds like bondage to me. Do you know that when we were in the detention center and we went all the time, and you know what they would tell us over and over again? They would tell us these kids, these teenagers all the time, we want boundaries. Our parents never gave us any. We just wanted someone to say, that will hurt you. Or no, you know, that's not the best for you. We have a word filled. The word of God is filled with spiritual boundaries. Is it there to put you in bondage? No, it's freedom. It's freedom from bondage. It's, it's a guidebook out of bondage into freedom. It's if we will follow the spiritual principles of what God has given us, we will have so much freedom. We won't know what to do with it all. We'll just spill out all over the place. What else? Death to what, Henrik? Oh, death to what? Oh, sister. My goodness, that, give me five. Oh, my gosh. That is, that's right. To our true identity, the enemy cloaks us. Through the years with a false identity of who we are. And we walk around and we don't know who we really are. And we've got hurts and it manifests out in anger and offense. And we get hurt all the time. We're always offended. That's because we don't know who we are. God wants to just rip that off. Amen. I want death to that. Death to that. Hallelujah. Do not be misled, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect, free, large, full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all that gives light in the shining of whom there can be no variation, rising or setting or shadow cast by his turning as in an eclipse. Wow. And it was of his own free will that he gave us, say me, gave me birth. Say gave me birth. As sons of his word of truth so that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creation or creatures. A sample of what he created to be consecrated to himself. Every good and perfect, and you've heard me preach this for a year, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Guess who is one of those good and perfect gifts? You. We are one of those good and perfect gifts. He is the Father of what? Lights. 
That means we are light. The Bible says we are the light of the world. He is the light of the world, and it says we are. And I've shared this even scientifically, medically. They have proven that when conception happens, they have it recorded. They finally captured it. When conception happens, a light explodes. There is light. Isn't that cool? I just love it. Here's what it says in the message. Every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. The gifts are rivers of light cascading down from the Father of light. We're a river of life. We don't know who we are. Do you understand who you are? Cascading down from the Father of lights. Wow. Listen. There is nothing deceitful in God. Nothing two-faced, nothing fickle. He brought us to life using the true word, showing us off as the crown of all his creatures. Isn't that cool? Father God, we thank you that we are a good and perfect gift. We are not insufficient, inadequate. We are not um, inferior. Lord, we are your sons that you sent as a first fruit. We are like a first fruit, Lord. We're like a first fruit. That's what your word says. Oh, Father, we thank you. Show us, Holy Spirit. Give us revelation of who we really are. Give us revelation of who we really are. 19, understand this, my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear. A ready listener. Slow to what? Speak. God help us. Put a guard over my mouth, Lord. Over our mouths. Slow to take offense and get angry. Mary touched on that. I love how Holy Spirit, we don't know, we don't play on this. Holy Ghost plans what everybody, we don't ask, what are you going to preach? Send us your little outline. We don't do that. Because we know Holy Ghost just puts it all together. And it's fun for us, doesn't it? It's so much fun for us to see. We're not afraid. We really aren't. We love it. We love when people get up and share. Slow to take offense and to get angry. For man's anger does not promote the righteousness of God, wishes and requires. So get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted. Now remember it talked about sin implanting. You know temptation implanting? Well, this is how you get rid of that, is allow the welcome, the word of God to be implanted and rooted in our hearts. It contains the power to save our souls. Now, what's our soul? You are good students. Yes. Remember, as a believer, he's talking, James is talking, actually, he's talking to the Messianic church, the 12 tribes. In this, in this book. But he's talking to believers. All right? So our spirit, man, of course, is saved, washed in the blood. But our mind, will, and emotions is in process. And we need it to get quickened in a quicker process because it causes all the stuff. So it is power to save our souls. The word of what? The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. People, it's the word of God that will save our souls. It will cleanse us. Is what David was talking about. Detoxing our brain. Renewing our minds. This is the year of divine order in alignment. Spirit, soul, and body, we have to line up. Our spirit's cooking. Hallelujah. You know, it's doing flips all the time. But our soul goes, Bleh. And God says, to get your minds, wills, and emotions, it says, save your souls. You know, when you save that soul, you renew your mind, you're going to save your marriage. 
You're going to save your kids. Your health will be restored. Because we're triune. Our mind, will, and emotions and what we think manifest out into the other part of us, which is our body. We go, I'm sick all the time. Let's, and some of it is just an absolute, it is an attack. It's all an attack from hell. Sometimes it's a direct attack to our body. Sometimes it's a reaction to things we've been holding in and hurts that we have, offenses that we have, and then all of a sudden we have problems in our body. We see this when we minister to people. When we, when we do prayer ministry, we see it all the time. People get set free in here. Diabetes goes. We've seen this. We've been watching healing come from the healing of our soul. Okay? To save our soul means to deliver, to protect, to rescue from danger and destruction, to preserve, to keep one safe and sound. Soundness of mind. Okay? So, but be doers, verse 22. And we heard this today, too, from Crystal. But be doers of the word. Obey the message. And not merely listeners to it, betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. So be doers of what? Be doers of what? The word of God. Okay, be specific, like in your life. Who, who's brave enough to say, what do you need to be a doer of in your own life that God's been prodding you about? Be a doer of what? Patience. Patience. Oh. Kindness. Only speaking things that are agreeable to his word. Ooh, that's good. Doers of what? Faith. Faith. In what way? Taking leaps. Taking leaps. Wow. We'll help you. David will. He's a leaper. <laughs> He'll take you by the hand. You'll leap some big cliffs, I'll tell you. The good news is you'll make it to the other side. And I'll be cheering you on. All right. Yes. Trust. Yes. So how would that play out? How would... It's like for me personally, it's giving my granddaughter the dead hand and trusting that he knows exactly where she's supposed to be. And as you always say... That's right. And Father, we just thank you. We're here as a body and we're agreeing with Elaine right now. Lifting up her arms, Father God. And where she's weak, Lord God, your body comes alongside and strengthens her because, Lord, we have faith and we are there to help her see this through, Lord God. We're going to see it view. Yeah. We're going to continue. things to remember when it comes to our children is that we are his the fathers and the children children are the Abbas and he's he's given them to us on loan and that always helps me they're his and he's going to look out after them how are some of the strategies because I'm a strategist you're a strategist because you're created in his likeness after his image he's a strategist right so in those situations that we have how are some of the ways that we contradict his truth we know the truth but what are some of the lies that come at us to try to get us to contradict the truth of his word Sandy. Not living in our identity. That's, that's right, how heaven sees us. 
where we fall into that, the old pattern in, think, in thought life. Absolutely, Sandy. Yes. says, you know what, this isn't working out as, th as fast as you think it should, so we need a plan B. <laughs> and that's what is going to tear you down, going to distract you. That plan. So a plan B is, is from hell. Speaking out and agreeing with the lie. Yeah, that's right. Accepting you're not worthy. See, now that, absolutely. Judy. Remembering there's a treasure in the trial. Kristen. Ah. We should have, yeah, we should have got that wisdom. Acting, absolutely. And that, Father God, just help us. Do you know that was, that was revelation to me. That's what I love about the word. It says, I'm studying, studying, bam, 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 these things of revelation. And I thought, wow, that's right. When a trial hits, to go immediately there. If you learn nothing from this teaching, that would be such a weapon to go right to God. What's the wisdom? You promised it. I need wisdom in this. And understanding comes. Al. Wow, that's amazing. About covenant. Covenant. We don't understand covenant, especially in the Western world. We don't get it. Ed. Fundamental agreement that God's heart and his promises are for someone else but not for us. They're for someone else and not us. How many times have we done that? We've done it, haven't we? Did you have something? What is it? I'll do it later. Later? Oh, I'll do it later. That's right, Pastor. Ignoring the, Ignoring the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Wow. See, that's, that's right. So God, act before you get the word. Not waiting. Impatience. Right. Good, Kim. All right, 23. For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it and being a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. Now, you know, if you had some mornings like I do, it's, I'd like to forget what I look like when I, you know... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, you just want to promptly forget. But, but he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty, yes, freedom, and is faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it. You know, not just looking at it. The Lord is saying, dig, look into that perfect law of liberty, that's covenant. That's co Look into that covenant. Look in who we truly are. Look into that law of liberty. Wow. Being and is faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it, being not a needless or heedless listener and forgets but an active what? Who obeys. He shall be blessed in his doing, his life of obedience. Yeah. We will be, we are blessed people. When we will do, what does do in that context tell you? How does that speak? Holy Spirit, show us individually, what does this portion of scripture mean to me personally, but he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty, 
freedom and is faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys. He shall be blessed in his doing. How does that speak to you? What does Holy Spirit say to you in that passage? What's he saying? Yes. To be a living epistle of Jesus Christ in the earth. Amen. Who else? Don. Life doesn't stop. So we need to be continually in the truth because out here is the lie of the enemy. And if we keep looking out here, then our meditations are on the defeat. That's right. When God says to continue in this, get the picture, get the picture, get the picture of who I am in you and begin right. to live it. Just obey the picture. Right. Oh, that's good. See, this is what I love this because, see, in this, this is really what they did in, in Acts and in the early church. This is a wealth of knowledge and wisdom. It's boring when you just hear from a few. I love to hear. David loves to hear from all of you because it helps us all, doesn't it? Isn't, I love this stuff. This is just like a big old family room. Right. Okay, who else? Right. Yes. This is a direct contradiction of what the enemy says to us because he says, if you do it, everything will be taken away from you. You're going to suffer loss. Things aren't going to work out for you. It's going to be bad. But God is saying we're going to get blessed. Right. That's right. That is, that's the truth. Okay, I haven't heard from you yet. <laughs> you raised your hand, right? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Not only do we obey the Lord in our commitment to tithes and offerings, but everything else, it's prove me. He says, prove what he says yeah, in what good. we do. Oh, that's good. Hey, you that's know, good. too, I was going to say, too, what go along with what Pam had said, that has to do with healing, too. How many times have we not declared a healing that the Lord's done in our lives because the enemy has said, oh, no, no, don't tell them. Yeah. Or it's going to get removed or it's going to be lost. Remember that? You guys remember the story that stands out to me that I can remember. Uh, the Lord had healed my jaw, and he, healed, he I had so many teeth. There were so many problems. We couldn't afford uh, a dentist, and I had so many problems. I'd step down from a step, and I would just, the whole my, all these nerves would go alive. And, and uh, the Lord came in sovereignly and healed me. He went, shh, I could feel him go, shh, shh, shh. It was really cool. And every time, every time, I would tell or obey you about ready to share that testimony about what the Lord said. All of a sudden, that pain that was there, identical pain that was right there, came up. And that was in that place. And you know what I would do? I would say, you little scrawny demons, you are bound and you are powerless and you will not stop God from getting the glory. And immediately when I would share that testimony about the Lord's healing power, the pain would go back. So it works the same way as Pam was talking about there earlier, that the enemy will try and steal that. Be bold. Be bold. And Courageous. For you. Courageous. For the Lord thy God is with you. Amen. You just face that thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. If anyone thinks himself to be religious, piously observant of the external duties of his faith, and does not bridle his tongue. Take a hold of that tongue right now. Wiggle it a little bit. It's a little salty, isn't it? Your, your fingers. You just bridle that thing. But deludes his own heart, this person's religious surface is worthless, futile, and barren. We get that tongue going. You know, I really do believe we need to do that. What might that be? Well, I'm thinking how that would look. 
I, I see when I, before I speak, because I'm thinking, you know, if we're in public and, you know, it would look odd, but you know, <laughs> you know, if all of a sudden we're ready to say, and you go, don't do it. It was, <laughs> don't say it. <laughs> you know, I say whatever it takes. Just <laughs> yes, just put your teeth down. Just grit your teeth. Just, yeah, because if you don't bite your tongue, because if you just do this, you're like a ventriloquist and you can still talk. You got to get that tongue as you can feel it. You know, you're like a ventriloquist. He goes like this, it's wagging behind there. So you have to bridle. You know, what does it mean if you're a horse? If you're a horse, well, you're not a horse, but you know, someone who has a horse and it says bridle it, what do you have to do to that horse? Take control. And how do you do that with a horse? They have a bit in their mouth, right? And you pull on it. So I say whatever, give the Holy Spirit permission to bridle you. Holy Spirit, you do what it takes to bridle me, to pull me in and rein me in. You know, I tell you what, I, whatever it takes. I bet you you prayed that about me, didn't you, at some point? I sort of felt that in the spirit right then. I was going to say, one of the ways um, that uh, we lose out is because, and that, that the enemy steals from us, is that we make all of our activities around ourselves, and we leave God out. So as our activities, everything, watching TV, eating what we want, we can't hear the Holy Spirit say, don't do this. Don't. And so all of our activities are leaving him out. So we need to be able to let him That's in it. and be guided by him. Amen. See, this is bringing revelation. I love this. It's bringing, are you all learning something? I love it from each other. It's just great. All right. So external verse 27, and this is, I'll end here. So we got through chapter one, external religious worship, religion as it expressed in outward acts that is pure and unblemished in the sight of God. The Father is this, to visit and help and care for the orphans and widows in their affliction and need, and to keep oneself unspotted and uncontaminated from the world. We get this down, we got it all. We get this down, and you talk about being a light we will be such a beacon of his light. Not caring what people think, uh, bridling our tongues, doing all of those things, just this. Romans 12.1, it's Romans 12.1, it's Romans 12.1, say it's Romans 12.1. I beseech you, therefore, and worship team, come on up. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God... I mean, this is like a big deal to Paul. He is making a huge, I beseech you. Get this. When somebody says, I beseech you, it's like, get a clue. What's following is very important. It's life-changing. It's eternal. That you present your bodies. In the Greek, that means spirit, soul, and body. It's not just your body. It is everything that you are. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, which translates out to worship. That is worship. You do this, that's worship. You present it all to God. When you get up in the morning, God, I give you everything. Whatever comes out of my mouth, let it be pleasing to you, oh God. Lord, I'm a living sacrifice to you. That is worship. You are, you're hopping on the altar at that point. Here I am, God. I am a sacrifice of worship to you today. He loves it. Bam, he's right there. He's there anyway, but I'm telling you, he meets you. Then it's key, verse 2. 
Do not. It says and. And. So you do this, but the and is important. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not be contaminated by this world. Don't be conformed. I'll tell you, through TV, through the media. I have never experienced, David and I have never experienced, and I'm sure you're the same, of such disrespect and dishonor that we are seeing for people groups, for the president, for people in office, for pastors. We have never experienced the disrespect and dishonor that we have encountered. It's this spirit. Don't plug in. Sometimes we just go along life and we don't realize we're plugging into a hierarchy. We're plugging into something that's swirling out in the world. We're not to plug in. We are to disconnect from that. We're not of the world. We're in it, but we're not of it. <sighs> and be transformed by the what? The renewing of our mind. How do you renew it? And this is who said prove. This was you, John. That you may prove. That means accept as trustworthy and discern. Prove. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? You want to know the perfect will of God? First of all, you ask for wisdom, right? And I'll tell you, you will then prove what the perfect will of God is in every situation. When you go to him and you ask him and you're transformed by the renewing of your mind in the word of God and you go to him, you will prove what the will of God is for your life. Isn't that awesome? You will discern it. Because your focus is there. Your focus isn't down here. Okay. I want everybody to close your eyes. And we're going to pray. And while we're setting up and whatever, this is what, well, Father God. Thank you. You're a good, 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 good God. And that we are one of your good and perfect gifts that came down from you, the Father of lights. We came from you. We came from your heart. We came from you. Thank you, Lord God. Holy Spirit, show me. Show me, Holy Spirit. what I have been contaminated with. Show me, Holy Spirit, what I have allowed in of the world and didn't know it. Show me, Lord, what I have been conformed to by way of revelation, truth revealed. Show me what I have been conformed to. That's ungodly. Because that's not your heart. Lord God, show me, Father. Show me. And as he shows you, I want you to take out a piece of paper. And I want you to write that thing down. And then I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with that when you get done. I want everybody, if you don't have paper, you can take one of the sheets in the back of the... In, in the back of the, your chair, or ask somebody, smile at them. They can't be offended because we just prayed against that, <laughs> taught against it.